today that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. That's, that's what the, uh, my, my title is today is Billy, build your house on the rock. See, I can't build my house on lies. I can't build my house on hate. I got to build my house on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. And see, Jesus Christ gave us a commandment to love one another. He said, a new commandment I give unto you. This is Jesus, John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. See, the devil comes in, and I okay, okay, man, let's call it that. Man comes in and try to put conditions on that commandment or try to get you off focus. What does the word say? You don't go and find some words that are going to fit you, especially in the Old Testament. We're in the New Testament. And therefore, the Old Testament is the examples for us. And one of the things you need to go understand from the examples of the Old Testament is that the law did not work. Huh? The, the Old Testament, where they had to go to beat people up, the Old Testament of people fighting in wars, the Old Testament of people saying they're going by the law, but they did contrary to the law. The Old Testament shows that the children of Israel were, were kicked out because of their transgressions of the law because they couldn't keep the law. There is no glory in trying to follow the law because it all shows over and over again that man does not follow the laws of God. So therefore, when you sit there and try to operate on either fire and brimstone toward people, you're not getting it. Your foundation needs to be what the commission is, is to go preach the good news. See, the good news is not to, to, to discriminate. Huh? You, you don't discriminate. That's not good news. The good news is not division. The good news is inclusion and receiving in the mercy and the grace of God. <laughs> Those who sit there and say, "Well, I, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to uh, make people feel bad," opposed to saying, "There's no way you can feel good in Christ Jesus, huh?" I like that. You can feel good in Christ Jesus. You don't need to feel bad in any other way. Amen. So uh, I want to be able to use this morning to talk about build your house on the rock. Build your your behavior your approach to life build it on the rock amen see so one of the things you gotta understand when talking about building on the rock is building it on what christ has told us to build it on what he said a new commandment i give unto you that you love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another that's a new commandment that's what christ said to do. amen so let's look at this I was building on a rock. Let me see, I think I'm skipping one. Let me see here. I'm going to start with the rock first, and, and I'll go back to that slide I want to show you. Look what it says in Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever, listen to, listen to the scripture, not listen to uh, a man, that contrary to the scriptures. And look, I ain't, I, I, look, I'm just saying, preachers, church people, your foundation must be the word of God. Your must must be based on the word of God. So let's let's, let's look at this. Therefore, whosoever hears these says of who? Not of people, not of people. Whether you, whether you're a church leader, 
whether you observe somebody sitting in the pool, people or, or congregation. Jesus is saying, therefore, whosoever hear the saying of mine. You mean, what does the word say? I mean, if the word says, where well, you going up there and put people down, turn them up, reject them, hate them, you go by that word. But what does the word say? That's what, that's what ministry is supposed to do is what does the word say? What is the what is the spiritual intent of what the word says? I'm not trying to put anything new. I'm not trying to put anything uh, of division. What does the word say? Just like Nehemiah over here to to my to my right. What does the word say? By reading the word distinctly. Why? So that you can go by the word. And if the word is saying something, that's your foundation. That's what you're responsible for. Even when Jesus was tempted to win, he responded by the word, what is written. So let's go by what's written, okay? So he said, and does is them. See, he said, don't just be, you know, the scripture is saying, don't be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Our history has pan out that those who sit there and try to get mean and ugly and sucking on that limit. Is, 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 is that what the word said? Does the word say for us to bear the fruits of the spirit? Does the word say that? Not, not, not anything else. You can go ahead and, 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 and be able to go and preach like John the Baptist if you want to. But what does the word say? You can you you need to understand what does the word even John the Baptist when he told the king, he said it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. All he was trying to tell him, hey, look. It's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. That's just not right. That's what the word said. You, you don't want to have your brother's wife, man. But he wasn't sitting there trying to condemn the, and, 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 and crucify and throw the man. Matter of fact, if you ever, look what he's saying, he's just trying to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you, it's not lawful for you to do that. I recommend you do something else. He didn't say you're going to hell. He didn't say that. Did, right. And I'm, I'm, I'm a rabbit trail, but that's all I'm trying to bring out is be hearers of the word and be doers. As Christians, you are doers of what the word in the New Testament says. You're not doers of the Old Testament. Old Testament is an example. You are hearers and doers of the word of God. You know, and, and and that doesn't mean that you find you you don't go by to try to impose laws and wills on people, <laughs> your will on people. You just tell them what the word said. John the Baptist did that, right? Just tell what the word says, and you don't have to be angry about it and suck up on a limit about it. Just say what the word says. See, the word said to love one another. If, if the word, if you know, you sit there and worry about sin, you need to sit there and say, what does the word say about sin? Let people understand, don't look what the word says about it. And instead of you sitting there and you I and, and don't and don't one of the things we had a controversy with some of the some of the people that that that, that attend that used to attend and may attend again, I don't know, is don't isolate one area of sin. Nope. If you do that, you condoning, you telling somebody that it's all right to do adultery, it's all right to do all these other things. Because I don't want you to do this. In reality, sin is sin. And we got to sit down how to help people be delivered from the areas of sin that they have in their life. And you show them by saying, look, Christ delivered me from it. So let's look at it and say, so don't just be hearers, but be doers of the word too. And I, you'll do well. If you just be doers of the word. He said, I liken unto him a wise man by doing it what you heard the word, the gospel says, which built his house upon a rock. <laughs> and he said, in life, verse 25, the rain descended and the flood came and the wind blew 
and beat upon that house, and it fell not, but was founded upon a rock. Now, what we want to make sure you understand is this. In life, we're going to have different challenges that are going to come our way. But those are trouble in my way. <laughs> and, and the fact is, that's going to happen whether you are in Christ or not in Christ. Trouble is going to come your way. The, sin, the rain will descend, the flood will come, the wind will blow. Those are symbolic of the fact of life. These things will happen to you. What, what matters is, what foundation are you standing on when the wind and the rain it comes and the flood comes? What is your foundation? See, one of the things I wanted to allude to is that if your foundation, and let's talk about even from, from the point of racism, if your foundation is built on hate, if your foundation is built on lies, what mean lies? If your foundation is built on the fact of the characteristics and behavior characteristics that people have told you concerning people have they have different melanin skin, you're building your house on a foundation of lies. I don't care. It doesn't matter whether you like it or not. Lies cannot be a foundation that you want to rest your head on. You know, even with the politics today, you can't build your 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 party on lies. How long? How will you? What you gonna, how are you gonna sustain it? What is your policy is gonna be based on the fact that you build it on a lie in the first place? How are you gonna build truth and trust? How are you gonna sit there and say the world should trust me if you lie? Think about it. How is anybody gonna trust anybody who build their fight? their life on lies and don't understand if you live by lies if you live by hate what does the word say about hate what does the word says about lying you can't do that well i'm gonna tell you something you keep doing it but the wind will come the rain will come the wind will blow what does it say what is that the rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew. And if your foundation, listen to those who listen, listen what's, what the word, the spirit is saying. When those things come, if your foundation is built on lies, if your foundation is built on hate, if your foundation is built on pride. See, you know, anybody want to sit there and even talk about superiority? If you build your foundation of life and then your children, the foundation of being on this, on this concept, whether you're black or white, and try to say that you're superior, you building yourself on flesh and you building it on lies, and you're going to have to deal when the rain descends and the flood comes and the wind blows on it. Is that foundation going to hold? Some people say, well, no. Is it holding today? Is it shameful today when we look at our history? And the answer is no. And you can't cover a lie. You can't make a lie to, to cover the truth, the facts. We had a conversation today, last week, about the facts of, you know, somebody on TikTok sit there and said, it was, it was a news commentator. Listen to this, people. A news commentator said, let me come off of this for a second. A news commentator said that a particular race of people are the most murderous people in the country. Now, when you heard that, it sounded like the facts should stand for itself. But when you listen to it, it, it wasn't, it, it would, if it's not brought into correct context, when you try to say that a certain group of people, in this case, it was talking about, I'll, I'll call it what it said. It said, it said, look, it said that 
that blacks are the most murderous group of people in the country. And and if you don't if you don't have the context of that, you basically saying is that 41 million people of color are the most murderous people in this country. If you go back, if you don't put it into the context of what the person really should be saying, not what the person said, right? Because 41 million people, and if you said most of 41 million people are the most murderous people in the country, <laughs> that means 21 or 22 million people are murderous. But that's not what the person really meant to say. What they meant to say is there was a group of 21,000 people in 2020 that was murdered. And of that, there was 9,000 of them murdered by people of color. And, and then there was the people of 7,000 murdered by people of, of uh, being white. And then the rest of them for other groups of people uh, that had melanin or not melanin in their skin or lack of melanin in their skin. All those, those numbers, those people, murderers, there's a group that led the pack in that group, 9,000. But that, if you're going to associate that 9,000 murderers of, of people of color, you need to sit there and say they were led to pack and committed more murder, but not the 41 million people, not the 99.9% .9 of the people. Because when you put 99 divided to 41 million, you, you don't even get a percentage point. And then, then to sit there and have people sit there and think that that's what you want to call those people, the 41 million, you must make sure you put it in context, just like Nehemiah, be it distinct. Be, speak distinctly. Say what you're saying distinctly, because you 41 million people are not committing murder. Only 9,000. And it's a tragedy of the 9,000. But guess what? That's a tragedy of the 7,000 too. And we're not gonna say that the rest of the millions of 200 million people that have lack of melon or people that are called white are murderous. Just that 7,000 are murderous. Just that 9,000 of people of color are murderous. Not the group. If now, if some people sit there and say, let the group take responsibility of the 9,000, of the 7,000, and therefore all the whole entire group are murderers, <laughs> I tell you what, that devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. If you're going to sit there and tell me that because the 7,000 whites are murderers, because of the 9,000, all, you know, blacks are murderers, all whites are murderers because of 7,000 or 9,000, you're telling a lie. That's a foundation that you can't live on. That's a foundation that cannot be, cannot withstand the rain and the wind and the flood. It cannot because that is not true. That is not a factual statement. There's no we. And another thing, there's no we for white people, there's no we white people kill 7,000 people. No, 7,000 white people may have killed somebody, but not 236 million, or whatever the, the, the population is, nor or, or blacks, not, not 41 million kill anybody. Huh? Maybe maybe, maybe 9,000 of the 41 million did, but not the, not the four, not 99% of them didn't do that. So are you going to label an entire group of people based on what a few did? That That's what I'm trying to say. Watch what you say. Let your words matter. Yes, it's a tragedy for anybody to be murdered. That is not, that's not, a, that's no excuse for that. But you know what? In our society, that's what the laws are there for, to go and address those type of people. That 7,000, that 9,000, that 21,000 that was killed, law, the law has something for them. 
to put them away, to put them in a place of correction. But you don't put 236 million white people as murderers. You don't. You don't put 41 million black people uh, of color or African American as murderers because of 9,000. You don't do that. You don't do that. You don't put an entire race of people based on a few actions or the actions of a few. People are watching you. People are trying to understand who you are. And then on top of that, you need to stop sitting there trying to call people behavior based on the melanin skin. Give me a break. 